Hello and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who may be new here, my name is Kieran Glover and I'm a professional web designer and developer. And for those of you who might be not new here, you've probably seen me do a couple of Webflow videos before, but I thought today I'd make a little comeback and make a fun little video showing you how easy Webflow makes it to create and update your personal website um, and especially highlighting the new Webflow symbols, which makes it really, really easy to just change things and update things on your Webflow website. And I think this is going to be the first of a three-part series. The first, as I mentioned, is going to be me doing the front end stuff on Webflow. And then the second part of the video, uh, I think I'm going to show you a bit how to use Ghost and how to link that to your Webflow website. And then the final video will just be me going over a few different hosting options for your Webflow website. So yeah, that's uh, what we're gonna cover in this video. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. So just before I get started redesigning my personal website, I've got a few houseplant tasks to do because I've just finished my regular workday. So I'm gonna do that now and then get started with the redesign. Oh, I'm back now from watering a few plants um, and yeah before we jump into the design I'm gonna do a quick design in Adobe XD but before I think it's always a good idea to just uh, sketch really roughly out on paper just how you're gonna structure your website and here you see me sketching out a, a little uh, blocks of all the sections that I want to add to the website so the first would be just a general hero and introduction section telling whoever's viewing the site a little bit about me. And then the second, I really want to highlight my client work first, um, because this is especially important if you're pitching for freelance work or if you're applying for other jobs, etc. And then I'm going to go into a bit more detail on a couple of personal projects that I've worked on, because these are also a really good way to show that you're passionate about what you are doing um, yeah, and that you're really engaged in the type of work uh, that, that, that you do professionally. And then one is going to be a blog, which is going to be a new thing that I'm going to be adding to my website. And this is going to link to uh, Ghost CMS, but we're going to go into more detail on that in the next part of the video. And then finally, just a contact section where people can simply click to send me an email and follow me on my different uh, social media. I really want to, to redesign in a project first kind of way more than a you know information kind of first way because I think the most important thing that potential uh, employers or potential clients want to see is the quality of your work and the type of work that you've been doing recently. So yeah, now I've got that all mapped out. I'm going to quickly jump into Adobe XD and get started making this a more uh, refined kind of design. And then the final step will be jumping into Webflow and just doing that all in Webflow. So let's get started with the design. Okay, so I just finished up the design in Adobe XD. As you can see, it's pretty close to what I sketched out earlier. So we have the main hero section with a little bit of information about me. And then as soon as you scroll, you get into the recent projects. And this is just the, the client uh, projects, uh, freelance client projects, the most recent ones there. And then as you scroll down a bit more detail and description about personal projects, the description will be a bit of rationale about why I built it. Um, and stuff like that just a little overview and then at the bottom we have the blog section here and then a little call to action to see all which will open uh, ghost uh, subdomain which I'll set up in the next video and then finally the simple contact uh, section at the bottom so yeah I'm gonna jump into Webflow and quickly get started building this Oh, 
So just at this part in the video, you can see me using a website called squoosh.app, which uh, is just a way you can uh, reduce the size of your images whilst maintaining a really high quality. And I believe it was created by some guys at Google, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I've been using it recently. It's just super easy to drag in your image. And then you have a bunch of different compression tools and adjusting the quality, etc., etc., to get that file size as low as you can whilst maintaining the quality of the image. And in doing this, uh, you'll find that the performance of your website will be dramatically improved because, uh, as most of you may already know, that images are really large file sizes and this can really impact the performance of your website and create uh, not the most desirable user experience uh, that you could get. So yeah, check out squoosh.app. I'll leave it in the description. And yeah, I uh, hope you find it useful. So to create these uh, things we call symbols, you can simply select on ele any element that you've already prepared. And for me, I'm going to be selecting this image card content. Uh, actually, no, this one here that's called image card, which is a link block with some text inside showing my project. And all that you need to do is hit on the right click, then look down on the drop down menu and click on create symbol. Then we can give it a name and I'm gonna call mine project uh, card, and create symbol. And then you can see on the right hand side, your settings uh, field or settings tab kind of changes a bit. Uh, and we now have this override field uh, section here, which is a pretty new feature of Webflow um, that really helps when creating websites a lot more faster and reusing elements across the site, stuff like navigation bars and uh, other cards, like exactly what I'm gonna be showing you here. So it simply says right now we have no override fields and it says to create a field, select an element within the symbol and click link to field. So I'm gonna do just that. Collect on this, collect, I mean click on this uh, text here and uh, it's called image card lead in my example. And I'm gonna hit link to field and here we have another little drop down menu um, and I'm gonna hit new override field and give this a name which is project card lead. Nice. Okay, and I've just created my override field it lets me edit the symbol content without affecting the master symbol. So now you can apply content overrides on different instances of the symbol. Um, so that's just a little helper and nice clear explanation about what a symbol is. So basically that means whenever we copy this symbol that I've created in the image card, we have the option to change the fields that I'm selecting and setting now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit on the heading as well. And it's a heading three, link to field, and I'm gonna create a new override field and you'll notice below that uh, we already have the one I just created. I'm gonna do a new override field and call it project card heading. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do three more for these kind of three sub items which shows the uh, skills I used in that particular project. So we do exactly the same, rinse and repeat. So click on new override field. I'm gonna call this project card skill one and then just do the same new override field project card skill two and then finally project card skill three okay nice so then if we just exit out of that and now we can click on our symbol and you can see we have all these new things uh, which are now our override field so Whenever I change this, um, or let's say I wanna create a new uh, project card, because as you can see, I have exactly the same one underneath um, there. So now if I wanna reuse this uh, particular element, I can just command uh, V, and that's gonna paste it underneath, and click on that, and then I can go ahead and change the uh, fields here from those overheads I just set. So let's say this was a personal project, and you can see in real time that is updating. Let's just say this is my personal portfolio. And then I can update the skills. Let's say for this one I used HTML and CSS. And then I did uh, the design in Sketch, for example. And then uh, let's say I 
prototyped in Envision. This is a, an example. And as you can see, as soon as we edit that, then we have our override there. And as you can see, the one we just set is still remain the same. However, it allows us to keep the design of the element exactly uh, the same. So that's a little bit of an overview of how we can use these symbols. Um, and we can copy and paste them throughout our website, even if we create more pages and override the text fields inside them. Just quickly want to point out one thing that I cannot override in my uh, these particular examples because of the way I have it set up. But uh, you'll notice that each of them has this kind of background image with a slight uh, gradient overlay. Um, I can't change the background image because it's a background image and not a uh, image within the card itself. But for example, if I went into my symbol and added an image into there, it works in exactly the same way um, as overriding text. So if I just go here over to elements, scroll down to image, and I drag in an image. And you can see here, uh, I can just choose a random image uh, to go in there. Um, uh, an example, of course, it looks pretty terrible if I left it like that, but this is just for um, example. Um, so yeah, we can go in to our symbol, double click it again, to get my image, and then I can click on the label here. Just this little icon up here, which is kind of like a purple uh, dot above the image. You just click on that and I can create a new override field and call it card image or keep it consistent, project card image. And then that works in exactly the same way as our other fields. So now you can see in each symbol, we have this option here to overlay uh, the image, not overlay the image, to change the image within our project card. A little quick uh, little thing I wanted to add. And yeah, I hope this small little tip helps you. Um, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or it's not clear enough or anything like that. So that brings us to the end of the first part of this mini series. As you can see, we've taken our design that I put together or slightly changed in XD from the original design. And then we took that and we made it in our Webflow site. Um, here, which you can see is currently just sitting on the staging domain that Webflow provides. As you can see, it's looking pretty nice. Everything has a link. I just need to go ahead and finalize all the content. Um, as you can see here, I didn't update that yet. Um, and then make sure all the links are set. And then this is what we're gonna be covering in the next video. Currently, we have the blog posts uh, just uh, placeholders for now, but we're going to be linking these to our ghost CMS um, and we're going to be hosting our blog on a subdomain. For those of you who don't know about Ghost, we're going to cover it in a lot more detail in the next video. It's basically just an awesome publishing uh, platform for having blogs and it's such a uh, nice tool to work with and just makes writing really fun and enjoyable and it's perfect for, for having a standalone blog and we're going to be linking that back to our uh, Webflow site here. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to cover in the next video, but I hope this uh, was an enjoyable video for you and I'll see you guys in the next one.